Hi folks! Well, I expect you wonder what had become of me. <laughs> Maybe not. <laughs> hey, good to be back with you anyway, yeah, yeah. I just seem to have taken a break from making a videos. I think it was just because I was... Um, I just seem to be doing a lot of things that I've done with you so much in the past that I thought I don't want to continue making videos on the same old stuff over and over and over again. <laughs> 5th of March, uh, I'll show you some of the things I've been doing. Um, let's take this off the tripod. Yeah, beautiful, beautiful weather we've been having. Um, so yeah, we've been doing I did some of these uh, small bud vases, uh, eight ounces, which are going to be. I've got to glaze them shortly. I've been making these uh, these tankards here. Plus, I've got tankards up there on the shelf. Yeah, and I did some of these with the. The ingle bean, some like that. Uh, they were kind of experimental because um, my good friend Freddie Moretti, who lives down in Florida, but he's Scottish, he sent me this. He sent me this in the ma in the mail, which he'd done on his three D printer, and um, so basically you. You know, you r roll out some clay, the thickness that you want, and then you take this, and then with with both hands, you push down on these pieces here into the clay, and then you push that down into it. And then it, it basically, it makes these, these little guys. Just a variation on that other stamp that I had, which was that. Um, which produces a slightly different result over here. I'll show you. It's 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 sort of more simple, you know. It's kind of nice in its way, though. Like that. So yeah, these are for the Inglebean Cafe down the road. Oh, I should have had these fired by now, but I I just haven't, you know. <laughs> Anyway, uh, I'm just actually right now, I've got to get on and do some firings now. I've got so much stuff here in the studio. I'm doing these little guys here. These are little espresso mugs, which in fact was a repeat order of some that I'd made. I made the other day. You saw me make those and he wanted some more. So these are these are they. Um, so yeah, let's just do these. Scratch here with your fingernail and a bit of water on the end. Just that's all you need to do. And then prepare the end of the handle with your knuckle like that. You see, that's the all important. You see how it's kind of, it's thicker at the end. It gives you more of an attachment. And then we just, best to do this on the banding wheel, just this part. And then dip it in the water pot and then just pull Keep the handle vertical off the side of the mug, whatever kind of mug it is, whether it's a espresso one, a small one like this, or whether it's a 
a tankard, a bigger one, or whether it's a pitcher even, you know. You want to keep this, don't let it go like that, you see what I mean? Because it'll weaken it just there. Keep it so it's just hanging nicely. And then do all the pulling that you need to do, all right? And then take it by the end, supporting it, and bring it around like that, you see? All in one, all in one movement. Just make sure you put him on straight. Sometimes when I'm larking around in front of the camera, I don't manage to put it on straight. <laughs> like this one. Let me show it to you just to sh so you know what I'm talking about. So you know, uh, I don't know if you can see that, but it's it's not quite as it should be. You see, you have to be have your eyes all about you so you can see. You see what you're doing. Otherwise, it's very easy to think you've got it nice and straight, when in fact you haven't. All right, now we're just gonna just do a simple <clears throat> fish tail there. That one will, it'll be all right. So what I do is I put it on the bench there and then I, I, I was looking for something I could use, you see, to push. Because when you've been fiddling around putting on a handle, it's very easy that it gets a little bit bent out of shape, you see. So, after you put the handle on, you want to you want to round it again. You see, I'm just cleaning uh, as I work. I'm just making sure that my wear board has not got lots of scabby bits on it, because that then can leave a mark on the bottom of the of the of the pot. You see. Just putting my seal on the base there. All right. Next. So these are basically, are basically, at this stage, I just, I thumb them around like this, you see. All right, no trimming or anything like that really not necessary to do trimming on something like this, it's just a waste of time. A waste of time! Yes, total and utter waste of time. So, just learn to throw, learn to throw in such a way that you don't need to get involved with a lot of trimming afterwards. So just on on there just to attach and now you can dip it in the water pot. Pull it. If you attach it properly, I very I might what I'm doing, what I'm doing now, the actual re-pulling of the handle off the side of the of the piece. I never get it. It never. It never. It never pulls off the pot. That tells me that it's a very effective method I have then of attaching the handle to to the to the pot. It it it, it works. Because if it didn't, it would pull off constantly, but it never does. So I must be doing something right. <laughs> Little fish tail, like that and that, and, and then flick the tail off. All right. You want to check him 
that he's that he's that he's straight. He looks okay. All right. Seal. Pop the seal there. Yeah, these good got to go to my good friend Sam, whom I whom I've never met, but he seems a friendly guy. He's out in Holland or the Netherlands, and yeah, he ordered the first one. He seemed to like him a lot and wanted more. The only thing, the only thing is that he says he wants saucers to go with them. I may have to speak to him about that because I do not like making saucers really. I think I agreed to make them, but I don't really like the idea of making sauces. Simply because sauces are... They're rather a... a they're rather a lot of work. And... And then... You know, you've got, no, you've got to throw them. Then you've got to... You've got to... Um, flip them over, you've got to trim them. That means you've got to carve a foot on the bottom. Well, you don't have to do that. It's true, you don't have to carve a foot. You've then got to do the, the cutout in the saucer to fit the... What am I talking about? The, to fit the base of the, of the mug so it doesn't slide around. So by the time I've done all that, basically, you want to cost it out it took it's more effort to make the saucer than it is to make the mug it's easier to make the mug and quicker than it is to do the saucer I know Simon but we liked somewhere to put the spoon and all of this yeah I know maybe that I could des design one where the saucer was sort of like was sort of like um, as I throw the actual mug, the saucer sort of is, is part of part of the mug. I mean, it would only really work if it was something small like an espresso, but you could probably do that. Yeah, it might not look so good there. You're picking it up to drink and you've got the saucer attached. It might look a little odd. A little odd indeed, yes. Yeah. So, yeah, I've been trying to figure out my workshops this year, apart from the ones I've got booked for here. So, yeah, if you want to come on a workshop, um, just go to my website, check out dates, and let me know what date you want. There's a lot of vacancies sort of going forward. I mean, after, after the May workshop, June, July, August, I've got quite a lot of vacancies there. So if you're thinking of coming on a workshop, give us a shout. And what I was referring to was outside workshops. I had to go teach workshops. And I went and said the other day, didn't I? Um, if anybody wants me to come and teach in this, in your studio, give us a call. Consequently, now I'm finding myself running all over the country, having to teach these wretched pottery workshops. <laughs> That's all good fun. Yeah, I've got to be March 15th. I've got to be in Madison, New Jersey, teaching a workshop there to the New Jersey Potters, I think. Phone's ringing. Sorry, I'm not answering it. Go away. Probably a spam. Um, then in... In early April, 4th and 5th, I've got to teach a workshop down in San Antonio in Texas. So that means hopping on an aeroplane. Which is causing me to be a bit pensive at the minute with all of the, the news that's flying around. I think there's a lot of fear mongering going around as well. So I'm probably going to go down there, do that. 
Oh, that's two workshops actually down there. One, one the fourth and fifth, and then another one the week following, right after that. So it's like the Saturday, Sunday, then there's Monday, Tuesday, I'm having off. Then Wednesday and Thursday, I'm then going to teach another workshop. And then, yeah, I've got to go see some friends of mine. Len Bowden, Len and Sandra, down there. I get away for a couple of days, get and see them. And then I've got to do, what else have I got to do? Oh yeah, uh, May, May, end of May, sometime end of May, I've got to be in uh, New Jersey again. I think it's Boonton. Boonton, is it? Boonton, New Jersey. I was there last year anyway. I've got to go back there, do another workshop. Then... Um, end of June, I've got to be up there on Washington Island, which is up on in Wisconsin, uh, on Lake Michigan, I think. Yeah, Lake Michigan. I've got to teach a workshop up there for a weekend with Kate at the Fiddler Fiddler on the Green. She has a sort of pub up there and they have live music. And but see, she's, a, she's into pottery. So yeah, going to be going up there teaching a workshop. Oh, that's mid-June. Oh, that's the end of June, I said, didn't I? Oh, yeah, that's right. I have an invitation also, teach a workshop up in Fairbanks, Alaska. So, so I got go up there. And that'll be that'll be exciting because that's like four thousand miles from here. So that'll be exciting. Yeah, I nearly taught a workshop in Alaska about 12 years ago, but it didn't materialize in the end. That was going to be in Sitka. And I always kind of regretted that I never made it. But maybe this will be the time. So I'm looking forward to that. And I think that's it. I think that that's I don't know what the end of the year is bringing. Sort of, you know, the, towards like the end of or midsummer towards an end of summer other than my workshops here. Oh no, I've got to go. Oh, I've got to go down to Well, I don't know actually if that's definite. I guess I'm supposed to be going down to Tennessee. But I haven't heard back from those people. I think it's Lee University in Cleveland, Tennessee. So, yeah, that's it, isn't it? We gallivant around the around country and teach workshops. But that's good fun. I like teaching. You know, I mean, I'm, I'm not, look, I'm not a good, a great. You know, people sort of think that I spend all my time in here just make, making pots in the pottery. Well, I do, but I mean, but then I do other stuff like organising potter's wheels to be made and making tools. Oh, yes, all that sort of stuff. Oh, yeah, I'm going to show you, actually. I was making some, making some tools. Let me show you them while I'm... Camera still working. Uh, yeah, all these guys. So I get these, you see, from my from my carpenter, and then I 
I have to sand them down a bit and um, and then I, I burn I burn with my my little burning tool one of these guys I burn and plug that in and then I and I I burn that into it and then I put linseed oil on it you see that's those I've been doing those and then these these are all my latest needle tool these are now complete except except that I've got to put linseed oil on those as well and then yesterday I went down to my my Amish Amish metalsmith and he's got me another batch of these trim tools which I I get like this from him and I have to but they're a little bit sharp you know they're a bit sharp and they've got burrs on them so I have to deburr them with a small um, small needle file I deburr those and get them all nice and then I put some uh, plastic well it's heat shrink plastic I put it over 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 the handle to make it um, yeah just a little bit nicer to hold you know like that you see it's just got a couple couple of pieces sort of like where you need it to hold to hold on to this is just rubber you see soft rubber you put that over and you heat it with the um, the heat gun and it shrinks this guy it shrinks it on and then oh yeah I've been making also oh yeah chamois leathers chamois leathers with floats on and also sponge sticks you know my usual uh, my usual sponge stick which I think is a very good tool I have to say it's nice because the sponge part the sponge part is it's not too it's not too big and they're easy to make I've shown you how to make them haven't I got a videos out there how to make them but not everybody can be bothered to make them. Yeah, I got myself a new balance. I'll show it to you. Now this is quite good as as a you know the ones I usually have these these ones which I've had for years and they've been okay. They were cheap as chips. You see, it comes on. Well, sometimes it's a little bit hard to read, and that only re reads up to five kg. Which is about eleven pounds or twelve pounds, something like that. This one, however, all right, and this one reads up to fifty pounds, and it's self-illuminating. I can change the from ounces to to pounds to grams and etc and it's sort of it, this bit kind of kind of comes up like like that you see if you want it to I don't know quite why they I'm not sure why it's like that exactly oh it seems like it's coming off oh I see it sits on top of a yeah it's like a little plinth thing there it sits on that's right yeah so yeah it, it that that weighs six six point seven ounces but I tell you what you know for what well, the other thing I like about it is it runs on batteries or you can plug it in what a relief these things with batteries are always going dead on me and I'm always having to put new batteries in so this is like works off the 
works off the 110 volts so it plugs straight in and it's the pricely sum of like 12 bucks something like that look it up on on um, on Amazon if you if you want a, a decent you can see the size it's that much bigger and yet it's not it's not really not really what I call big or heavy or anything and it can run on batteries as well there's a battery compartment there you see so I would recommend uh, getting that you know as a nice little addition to your your pottery studio easy to read you can weigh quite a good weight on that uh, I just thought I'd show it to you where were we we were fiddling here weren't we I just got a couple more to make I don't know whether I should just I've got three more to do I'm just gonna do one more here while I'm with you because I don't want to I don't want the, either the battery to die or the the card to do what it often does do. So we'll do this quick, quickly. This last one. I am getting my leech treadle wheels. I'm picking up a batch of them on the middle of March. I think I spoke to my carpenter today. He said they'd be ready by the 16th. Those of you out there who ordered one. And I've got three people with definite orders. I may actually just keep one of them myself, which will mean there's going to be one, one vacant wheel. If somebody wants, if somebody wants a leech treadle wheel, it'll be in a kit form. Then, if you want to come and pick it up. From my point of view, that is the best because then I haven't got a hassle with having boxes and crates made up and all of that sort of caper. If you know what I mean? If you want to come and pick it up, save me having to do all that. That is very good as far as I'm concerned. So yeah, I will have one. I will have one wheel uh, available. So if that interests you. And that's the last of this batch, and then it'll have be a case of waiting till I get another, at least another three more people on board before we can start a fresh batch. My carpenter, he only does five, you see, five at a time. So, if that grabs you, it should grab you. Go on, splash out. You won't regret it. I'm keeping one myself, as you see. Yeah, I, mean, I used to have another one here. I used to have two in here, and then I sold it to David Walker down there in. I can't remember where he came. He came in a truck, picked it up somewhere down in. I can't remember if it was Tennessee. So, yes. And now I'm thinking, oh, I want another wheel back again. I fancy doing a bit of porcelain throwing, and I thought, I oh, know, if I had another wheel, then I wouldn't have to keep cleaning out. You know, the wheels, just keep it as a porcelain wheel. Hey, thanks for joining us, folks. Eh, just a little window here on what I'm doing here in my studio. Sort of repeating pretty much stuff I've done with you loads of times. But that's it, isn't it? There's is a lot of repeat. <laughs> if you're a repeat thr thrower like, like we are, like some of us are, then... You're going to find yourself repeating quite often, but there's a lot to be learned from just repeat watching. So don't be afraid to repeat watch. You probably learn something each time. Keep practicing. Talk to you soon. Bye for now.